Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Bear Arms in Scottsdale, Arizona, taking a look at a pair of cool factory machine pistols from their reference collection. We have here a Glock 18 and a Glock 18C. Now, there's not a whole lot of backstory on these to tell you. Essentially, the Glock 17 is first developed for Austrian Army pistol trials. It's accepted in 1983, it wins the trial, it becomes a military service pistol and the company decides to expand to try and get into additional markets. And the two they see as being the, well, the two that they immediately go after, uh, after being a military service pistol, are military and law enforcement, a police sort of pistol, and target shooters. This kind of makes sense from a European perspective. The idea of having a concealed carry version of the Glock isn't something I think that would immediately occur to, or immediately look like a big potential market to the Austrian, you know, to an Austrian company. That of course would come, these would become very popular in the United States. But the two initial target markets are not those. They're the military and police, and that is where the Glock 18 comes in. Like, ah, there are a lot of law enforcement agencies that might want a full auto version of this. And the other is the target shooters market, and that's the Glock uh, 17L, with a longer slide for target shooting. Of course, we're going to look at the 18s today, and what I think would be most interesting to do is look at how these actually work. They've got a selector switch on the side, but what does it do? Well, let's take a look. The Glock 18 was first released in 1986, so the first ones were in fact Generation 1 Glock 18s. This example is a Gen 2, and in fact our Glock 18C is also a Gen 2 gun. The typical magazine you see with these is a 31 round magazine with a plus two extension on it, so that's what I put into this one. And we've got all the standard Glock markings. Caliber, it's made in Austria, Glock logo, and the model number, which is 18. Nothing special on the right side of the gun, just serial numbers, Glock markings, etc. And the only external feature that makes this stand out is this selector switch. So the one dot is semi-auto, the two dots are full auto. Now the Glock 18C, or Compensated, was released in 1996 uh, in response to requests to make the 18 a bit more controllable. These things shoot at, depending on ammo, 1100 or 1200 rounds a minute. They're quite light. They are remarkably difficult guns to shoot effectively in full auto. And for that reason they've never been hugely popular. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of people who think that this would be an excellent weapon. Uh, a lot of those people don't have a whole lot of training, and yet end up in procurement related positions for law enforcement or military agencies, and that's typically where you get sales for something like this. That or civilians who just think they're going to be fun. Which, by the way, they really are. At any rate, in order to make this a bit more controllable, what they did is they lightened the slide, because uh, less reciprocating mass here is going to cause less muzzle flip. Uh, when the slide reaches end of travel. They cut a big old port in the front and four slots in the barrel. So these slots are going to redirect gas upwards, which reduces the amount of muzzle climb, which makes the gun more controllable. I have fired a regular 18, I've never shot an 18C, um, but I have it on good authority, namely from James Reeves of TFB TV, that the C is in fact substantially easier to shoot uh, than the regular 18. This red, by the way, is not factory original, that was a previous owner who filled in all the markings red for visibility. Anyway, uh, these slide changes are the only difference between the 18 and the 18C. The full auto mechanism on them is both the same. Alright, so to disassemble this we do have to have the gun in semi-auto mode, and then we're just going to do the regular Glock thing. Pull this back, pull that, pull the slide off. And in order to properly show you how this is actually working, I have a Gen 2 Glock 17 to show you as a comparison. Let's start with this selector switch. All it does is flip that little finger in and out. So in full auto that finger protrudes down below the slide, in semi-auto it does not. So in semi-auto the inside of the slide is identical to this Glock 17 slide. And there are, in fact, no other differences mechanically on the slide. Now, if we take a look at the frames, this is our 18, this is our 17. And you can see that on the 18, the slide rails are actually slightly higher than on the 17. So you cannot take a full auto Glock 18 slide and put it onto a Glock 17 frame. It just simply 
doesn't fit. And that's part of what Glock had to do to be able to market a machine pistol. Of course the machine pistol is uh, limited to only people who are allowed to own machine pistols. Uh, to the best of my knowledge there are no transferable Glock 18s. It's possible there are some pre-86 dealer samples, but this was introduced in 1986, so there really would be a question as to if any got in before the registry was closed. Uh, generally speaking, the ones that you always see are going to be uh, either post-86 samples or uh, conversions. All right, back to our frames here. Uh, again, 18 here, 17 over here, and you can see the one real difference is that there's this little tab. So this is the sear, uh, cruciform sear on your 17. You've got the same thing on the 18 just with that little extended tab, and this piece of plastic rail is cut away to give some space for it. So this is a very simple, mechanically speaking, a very simple conversion. And the way it works is that this little finger, when in full auto, pushes on this tab. So if I, there's the gun cocked and ready to fire, if I pull the trigger, this sear is going to come backward, it's going to finish cocking the striker, that guy right there. It then drops down, releases the striker, striker goes forward. The gun fires, the slide's going to come open, and then when the slide starts to go back forward, chambering a new round, this little tab gets pushed over. That's done by this curved feature right here. That's effectively your disconnector. It pops this cruciform sear back up so that it can't uh, fire a second time unless I release the trigger and allow it forward to recock. However, if I have that full auto finger, it essentially just acts like an auto trip. It's going to come in, it's going to push this back down, which releases the sear a second time, and it will continue to do that as long as I'm holding the trigger back. All right, so we can actually see that in action here. That is unloaded. If I pull the trigger and hold it, the gun's going to fire, it's going to cycle open, and then if I do this very gently, it's going to chamber around, lock up, and it's now resting on the auto sear. You can see this, the slide's just out of battery. The last bit of travel, click, that's it pushing that sear down, which releases the striker, which fires it a second time, and just repeats the process. And of course if I let that go with the regular amount of force, it, it does it all by itself. I can just get this one to stop by letting go of the slide very gently, and then boop, fires again until I release the trigger and then it resets. So there you go, it's really a quite simple system, uh, which is really the hallmark of Glock. The thing that made the Glock so successful is to take what is potentially and often a complicated mechanical system and make it a very simple system with as few components as possible, make those components durable, and you can end up with a remarkably reliable and economical product, and that is the Glock. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this look at how the 18, a much fabled but fairly rarely seen version of the Glock, actually works. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'd like to give a big thanks to Bear Arms for giving me access to these two from their reference collection to film. Check them out in Scottsdale if you're ever up here. Thanks for watching.